Well, hi there. Thanks for joining me for another Doodle Machine Technique Discussion video. So I've made a few of these um, technique discussion videos and my channel hasn't really taken off the way I was expecting it to. I was getting down on myself thinking maybe my stuff wasn't good or that my face looked weird or maybe I, I sounded dumb or, or maybe I just had an annoying voice. But then it dawned on me. If I want to be a YouTuber, I need to act like a YouTuber. So let's give this a try. What's up, YouTube? Doodle Machine coming at you live once again. I got some sick Adobe Illustrator techniques to show you today. But before we get to those, I'm going to make some coffee. All right, I got my coffee. I think we're ready to get on to those Adobe Illustrator techniques I was telling you about right after this word from our sponsor. StuffSpace is an online sharing platform where you can do stuff and connect with people that do things and stuff. It adds customizable stuff things so that you never miss out on your stuff. Use offer code DOODLEMACHINE at checkout and save 1% off the annual subscription. All right, I think we're ready to get on to those Adobe Illustrator techniques I was telling you about, but I just realized it's time for my daily meditation and mindfulness routine. Let's get mindful. Huh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to be that kind of YouTuber. Probably not. Probably. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. Oh, there's so many of them. Why, why is everyone here a noob? Just a bunch of noobs in here, you guys. It's everybody's a noob. <laughs> Look at these noobs. I can't believe how many noobs are here. No! So um, today we're going to be talking about my favorite new uh, Adobe Illustrator technique, which is textured shading and highlights. This is something that's easy to do in a raster art program like Photoshop or Art Rage, but it's not so straightforward to do in a vector program like huh? Adobe Illustrator. I found a few ways to get this effect and it's it's so fun and cool that I've been using it in pretty much every single illustration that I've made since. But before I show you how, let's answer the question. What is textured shading? Textured shading, it's nothing special. It's shading but with sort of a, a pixely green texture to it as if it's done with an airbrush or almost like a splatter effect. See here, the dark areas of shadow on my banana have a grainy edge and the highlights too. I mean, when I say shading, I also mean the highlights or really any kind of textured overlay. You can use this same method for shadows, highlights, or adding secondary colors, whatever. But in Adobe Illustrator, there are lots of ways to do shading from simple gradients to using masks and adding your own objects with blurs to create a soft edge to the shadow areas. But you can see that these shading methods don't have any sort of texture to them. These texture effects are super easy to do in raster, like in Adobe Photoshop, but not in vector like Adobe Illustrator. With raster images, it's super easy. It's just a matter of choosing or making a brush that has a grainy texture to it. Any sort of airbrush where you can control the, the drip spread. Here I am in ArtRage and you can see how easy it is to add shadows and highlights just with this simple brush. No complicated method needed. And over here in Photoshop, I'm gonna do the same thing with a standard soft edge brush and I'm just gonna change the brush color mode to a dissolve color. So you can see here as I paint, it's not gonna create a smooth transition. It's just gonna kinda of drop in a bunch of pixels to create that grainy edge to the brush strokes but doing it in vector is a completely different story. There's no go-to splatter brush in Adobe Illustrator. And you can make your own brushes, and I've done that before, and you can use those brushes to get a sort of similar effect. But I'm gonna show you a method that is, I think, more eloquent and powerful. And it's also pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Actually, I'm gonna show you two ways, the easy way and the complex way. Let's start with the easy way. The easy way to do texture shading is by using simple gradients to add highlights and shadows. 
So what I'm going to do with this banana guy, you can see I have him on two layers. His face is different than his body. I'm going to take his body and I'm going to copy and paste it in place right over top. So I actually have two versions of his body. See that? So what I'm going to do is apply a simple black and white gradient to this body shape. Now what I'm going to do is apply what's called a photo filter to give it a grain effect. So instead of it being a smooth transition from black to white, it's going to be a more um, grainy rough transition. And you can find that photo filter under the effect menu, texture and grain. Now a window will pop up and what you want to do is select green and the type of green type is called stippled for this effect. And what it's going to do is apply that um, kind of stippling to the entire gradient. And so instead of it being a smooth transition from black to white, it'll be all rough and pixely. You can adjust the contrast and the intensity here to get just the right kind of balance between light and dark that you want. And then you're going to click OK. There we go. Now, this doesn't really look right. So what I'm going to do is apply transparency to it. I'm going to put it at 50% transparency. Now, let's say I just wanted to use the shadows from this transparency, right? I want to keep the yellows normal, but I want to add a shadow to them. What you would then do is instead of just leaving it on a normal transparency, you're going to change this to a multiply. And then it's only going to use the dark areas of this gradient on that object. See that? Now, let's say I want to add a highlight. We're going to do that with the same method. I'm going to copy this object and paste it in place over top. And if I'm just going to remove the transparency for a minute so you can see what I'm dealing with. And now instead of focusing on the shadow, I'm going to focus on the light area of the object. So I'm going to use this to add a little bit of a highlight to the top of the banana. Let's do it something like that. Now, instead of going with a multiply, I'm going to go with a screen, which is the opposite of a multiply. And it only uses the light areas of the gradient. I'm going to make that maybe just 75% opacity or so. There we go. I've added simple shadows and highlights to this guy using just simple gradients and the grain filter. Actually, real quick, I'm just going to show you also, you can do the same thing, not just with linear gradients, but with radial gradients. So I'm going to do the same thing on his eye over here. I'm going to copy his eye, paste it in place. Then I'm going to put a radial gradient on that eye. I'm going to adjust the, uh, the position of my sliders on the gradient to make it kind of just right. I want to put a shadow on just the bottom part of his eye. Same thing, I'm going to use the effect menu and it actually keeps my last used effect up at the top. So I just click apply green and then I'm going to change that to a multiply. I'm going to just reduce the opacity just so it's a subtle gray tone, just like that. And I'll do the same with the other eye. Copy, paste, use that same gradient. I'm going to sample from the first eye and just go to apply the grain. There you go, simple as that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple more advanced techniques. The first is, what if you don't want your gradient to be just a strict fade from light to dark in a, in a linear fashion? What if you want to actually draw the shape of your shadow in a specific shape and have the gradient um, kind of blend in that shape instead of just from one color to another in a straight line? So the way I like to do this is I use a simple mask. So I'm going to, let's say I want to, have a shadow that kind of curves around the edge of his body like that. I'm going to make this a black object and turn off his face here just so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to apply a blur to this. So I'm going to go to the effect menu and go to the blur and I'm going to put on a simple glossy and blur. Now I'm going to copy this shape and paste it in front and do what's called a clipping mask. So I'm going to select both objects, the one in front and the one behind. And I want the one in front to be the mask for this object behind. So I'm going to go to Object, Flipping Mask, Make. And you can use uh, Control 7 on Windows. I think it's Apple 7 on a Mac. And there, it has now cropped in that shape. You can see that's exactly the shape I want. But here's how we apply a grain to it. I'm going to double click on the mask to edit the object. If I go to apply a grain just right now like this, it's not going to work. You're going to see here, see that 
because this is just one black object and the green needs to be put on a black and white object. So I'm gonna put a white square behind that. So now I have two objects. You can see the outline here. There's a white square and a black shape that I made that has a blur on it. I'm gonna group them together and now when I apply the green, you'll see it's gonna work properly. See that? So you can see right here, I have an a object that has um, my exact shadow in green that I want. And the same thing, I'm going to apply a multiply filter and just lower the opacity. And you can do the same thing for the highlights as well. Now, here's where things get interesting. What if you don't want a simple multiply filter? What if you don't want it to be just pure black and pure white? Well, it's not as simple as just selecting a different color for this. So this object that I put here, I'm going to put the opacity back up to normal. This is a black object. But if I go up here to the colors and I try and change the color of this, you'll see it's not actually going to add any color because the green filter is a pure black and white filter. So you have to do something a little tricky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this object out. Okay, I'm going to paste this object. I'm just going to send it to the back for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this banana's body. I just pasted it right on top, see? And I'm going to apply to this shape the color that I want my gradient shadow to be. So I'm going to make this a kind of dark reddish yellow. Because I don't want it to be just pure black with a multiply filter because that kind of gives it a gray cast. Now I'm going to take this object and cut it. Then I'm going to select this object that has my shadow color and I'm going to apply a transparency mask to it. And you do that in the transparency palette right over here. So I'm going to click this make mask button there. Now I am currently editing the inside of this mask. I'm going to just paste my object that I cut before. See that? However, it's doing it backwards. Right now, the areas that I had black are actually the transparent areas and the areas that I had white are actually the shadows. And you can change that quickly by just going to invert the mask right over here. After you're done editing the shadow and the green inside this object, you got to click back over here to go back to your regular editing mode. See that? Now I have a colored shadow that's the exact color that I want. And you don't have to use it for a shadow. You can use it for highlights or adding secondary colors. Here, I'm going to do the same thing and add a uh, bright yellow highlight to the other side of this banana. Now I'm going to do the same thing for adding a quick highlight here. So I'm going to take this banana shape, paste it in front. You can see I still have two. I'm going to change this to the exact color that I want that highlight to be, which I want it to be a bright, a bright yellow. Now I'm going to show you from scratch how I can turn this into a highlight. I'm going to click make mask and make sure that I'm not editing this one over here make sure that I have the mat, the contents of the mask selected. Now I'm going to draw the shape that I want that highlight to be. Let's say something like that. Okay, then I'm going to make that the fill. And keep in mind that the object that's inside your mask has to be pure black and white for the green effect to work. So I'm going to make this pure white. And the reason it appears yellow is because my actual um, object is yellow. So I'm going to apply a blur to this, the same thing that I did before. Now I have a blur. Now I want it to have that grain because right now it's just a smooth transition. That's boring. We're doing texture gradients here. So I'm going to take, make another object, put it in the back and make it pure black. And I'm going to group these together. So right now I have an object that is pure white and pure black. If I were to copy and paste this over here, you'll see this is what it looks like on the inside there. I'm now going to apply the green filter. Effect, texture, green. Okay, default green is fine for me. And we're going to go back over here, stop editing. And there you go. Take a look at that. See how it has that texture gradient, but now the color on top is actually a bright yellow. And you can change the colors afterwards. You don't need to stick with it. Let's say I wanted to have like, I don't know, some sort of a blue light over here that was like casting a bluish uh, highlight on this banana. I'm just going to select this front highlight object and change the color to a bluish color. See that? I don't actually want that, so I'm going to get rid of this. And there you go. So this is how you can layer your objects 
and use shadows and highlights in different colors to add whatever kind of depth and complexity you want to your illustration and also give it that cool grain effect. So that's it. It's such a simple technique, but it has such a cool look to it. It's something I've done in raster art for a long time, but I hadn't bothered in vector art because it always seemed too complicated. And now that I've found a relatively easy way to do it, I've been using it all the time. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. Do you have any questions I didn't answer? Do you think you'll use this technique in any of your illustrations? While you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Click the thumbs down button if you dislike it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I do a daily doodle every day when I can. <laughs> And as always, thanks for watching.